This is the MLW Radio Network. Welcome everybody to the Mind of the Meanie, your weekly peek into the world according to former WWE superstar and ECW original, the Blue Meanie. We'll cover wrestling, music, movies, sports, and lots and lots of useless knowledge all contained in the Mind of the Meanie. I am your tour guide, Josh Chernoff, and he is the Blue Meanie. Meanie, what's on your mind? Well, was it good for you? Oh, uh, Always. Episode 69. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I'm 48 years old. I just made a 69 joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. The the, the show uh, turned 70 episodes today. We, uh, we can get a discount at the buffet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, normally I have a, a long diatribe where I usually join in with but like uh i am tired um a little inside baseball uh we just had this conversation with our patreon folks uh yeah like our schedules are crazy right now yeah we you and fight and me and uh shoot everyday things Mm -hmm. and uh well, first, like Captain, I'm Captain Kayfabe over here. I uh-huh. just did a, an ap- appearance for our our mothership MLW. I was gonna say, yeah, you're busy going getting that Road Warrior pop at the ECW <laughs> Arena. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like I didn't even tell you I was doing it. No, but, um, and I well, I well, was suspicious though because I had an idea. I'm like, hey, they're in Philly tonight. I'm like, hey, Meanie, are you doing it? And it was like radio silence. And I'm like, that's well, le- I, I legit <laughs> wasn't. I legit. Ha- little uh in, another more inside like it was a tv taping so i i, I forgot how long those are they oh, do God. like four episodes it was like four or five i was like oh my segment should be coming up soon let me put my phone in my bag <laughs> and then like i'm sitting i'm sitting at the i'm sitting at the fucking monitor i'm like oh yeah this shows we got a ways to go and i was like i definitely got dressed way too early <laughs> <laughs> it was great though um, you you posted a a video um, online of of you entering into the uh, the the battle royal there and uh, man it was like you got that you got the double pop like that we just <laughs> we just heard Vince McMahon get you know when he came out on SmackDown it's the double where, pop. where the hell have you been the music the music hit and the BWO logo shows up and there's a huge pop. And then it was almost like, for whatever reason, I guess people like didn't think you'd really be there because as yeah. soon as you came through, they thought it, the blue Tilly was coming. Yeah, as soon as you came through, it was like the pop like increased. You know, it was like it, it was it was really it was like goosebumps. It was really cool to see that, like especially after this <laughs> freaking year and a half, man. And yeah, it, 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 it was, it was like awesome. a good shot. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Uh, it, it was like a, a it was like a shot of medicine, you know, uh, being out of the eye for a year and a half, not doing anything for a year and a half. Uh, you know, I've turned down a lot of stuff uh, pre vaccination, and then uh, they came to me. Well, I did uh, the Rob Van Dam thing, but mm-hmm. you know, I'd been vaccinated. Hey, it's Rob Van Dam. You get to watch his his life story with him. Amazing. But uh, as far as, you know, doing shows, uh, they, uh, the MLW have reached out, and I was like, oh, yeah, sure. And, of course, uh, I, mum's the fucking word. Right. Uh, so, like, uh, yeah, to walk through that curtain, like, I was standing at, there's so much that went into it. Um, the, but I was standing at the, the, you know, curtain, and uh, as soon as I count that, like, for those who haven't seen it yet, I guess it's a little bit of a spoiler. Or no, this old, this episode will air after the show airs. So yeah, when's this episode air? Like Perfect. five weeks from now. <laughs> yeah, Here pretty much. Um, you know, the, you're standing in the gorilla position, and then that count it, like it, it's. I was in the MLW Battle Riot, which is like their version of Royal Rumble, mm-hmm. except there's pinfalls, submissions, over the top rope, 
You can bring weapons, do all this stuff. So they did the countdown. I was number 31. And then just that adrenaline rush hits of, all right, this is it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Walk, walking into the unknown. And, um, you know, it's like 10, not, and you hear them counting. You're like, oh, please don't be disappointed. Uh, <laughs> three. <laughs> and then the music hits, which the BW show, BWO theme, which opens the show each and every week. And the same adrenaline rush I get listening to that theme when we do the show was like magnified just standing at the curtain. And then you hear the crowd. It's like, oh, you know, <laughs> you kind of like exhale a little yeah. bit and then walk through the curtain. And, uh, you know, I, I had been watching everybody else's entrances. You know, some people come out and they're fired up and they're running. They come do a little pose at the top. And I was like, man, what, which, what, what should I do? Which, and this is all thinking on the fly. I wasn't, <laughs> I went into this with no pre-planned, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just do the old, uh, Scott Hall blue, uh, the, the bad walk. guy, yep. sur the, the, the surfer walk. I call it. <laughs> That's what I call it. Cause it's like, Hey, I'm going to hang 10. Um, it's like, fuck, I'm going to milk this fucking pop. Yep. So I kind of just like slowly did the uh, Scott Hall walk out and out of the corner of my eye, I'm like looking at the crowd out of my peripherals and like, I see people. Like there's people standing, and then I I watched the rest of the crowd stand as I was like slow, and dude, it was like the most amazing feeling, and then, um, you know, I, you know, I did I struck my uh, I looked around like, hey, what's up, and then hit the meanie dance, and then I did uh, proceeded to do what I called my Hulk Hogan entrance, uh, where. <laughs> Yeah, Hulk does the thing. Well, I'm telling you, brother. I was like, I'm going, in, I'm going into a, a battle ride. Let me fucking Hulk up. And I start doing that, and that's where the video cuts off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, another little piece of ins uh, inside baseball is uh, originally before me, Richard Holiday, the, uh, the air, the ra rarefied air, yes. Richard Holiday. He was supposed to be in there, and uh, I, I had planned something with him. But he had done a match and a pre-tape where they jump him, and he legit got busted open. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, they busted. He, it was an accident. It was a pure accident. You know, they were in a spot where it was really wasn't really well lit, and he took a shot to the, and got busted open. So they had to take him out of the rumble. So I was like, oh, fuck. I'm at the curtain. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. Richard's not in there. <laughs> um, uh, what am I going to do? So I'm just, I, I, I start doing the Hulk Hogan. Rah, fucking, um, I get down to about like the base of the ramp right before you get to the padding, right before you slide in. And I slid in and thank God everybody in that ring was a seasoned professional. You know, uh, you know, uh, Lloyd, Samu son, and Anawaii. Yeah. Uh, Zicky Dice was in there. Uh, oh, wow. So many good guys. And they just you know, started, you know, feeding. Like, you know, uh, I, they just start feeding for punches. <laughs> and yeah. then, uh, well, you know. And like you said, they're professionals. They knew what they were doing. You come in there yeah. and you get that pop. That's, you know, they yeah. bump and feed. Uh, Div Div yeah, Davari was in there. Um, yeah. So, and like after, afterwards, Davari was like, dude, I felt the, I heard the pop. I felt the pop. And I just started screaming at everybody in the ring, feed me, feed me, feed me. <laughs> and that took me back to a, a day when like Paul Heyman would have us do a run in. And then we were leaving and he would run in. Paul Heyman would go, second wave, second wave, get back out there, get back out there, feed, 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 feed. Wow. You know, like for Sandman, like we, you know, uh, there was a time in Queens, New York. And we all ran in and fed for the same man's cane shots. And we saw sold and went back to the locker room. And Paul puts down his headset, and runs from the monitor, goes, second wave, second wave, get back in there, feed, feed. <laughs> and we run down the aisle again. And it's, blah, 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 oh, blah. and we're like bumping and feeding, bumping and feed. So, you know, Davari hears the pop. He goes, feed me, any, feed me, any, feed me. Any. I roll in. Here's uh, Lance. Boom, 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 boom. And uh, I hit the meanie dance, do a little uh, improv with the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, hand gesture and the mm -hmm. finger wiggle. 
I turn around and Davari cuts me off. <laughs> and I was like, well, all those guys that's feeding me, I, sh- I should give them their, their heat back. Yeah, right. uh, so <laughs> I, I took a little bump. And Davari uh, it, told everybody to feed you just so that he could be the one to cut you off. Oh, he's a seasoned veteran. Yeah. yeah. He, he knows he's what good. he's doing. Uh, he knows where his bread's buttered. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was really cool. And, uh, yeah, dude, after the match, we fucking um, get to the back. And uh, I go up to the guys. I go, hey, guys, thanks for the Stone Cold feed. Yeah. You know, they're, they're feeding him like I was fucking Stone Cold. I was like, oh, thanks for the Stone Cold. And they, they popped. But and that's where that's awesome. Davari was like, hey, man. Uh, yeah, I just I just felt the pop. I heard it, and I just told everybody to feed, feed, feed. So that was really cool. And there's a bunch of other surprises in there I don't want to give away. Well, then again, it, it already aired by time. You know, I got to be in a ring with a couple of Von Erics. Uh, I got to be in a ring with Savio and Quang. Uh, he did double <laughs> duty. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, that I is the dream, right? I mean, mo- most no, well, people got into the uh, business to be able to share a ring with Quang. Y- yeah. Well, well, here's the, here's the thing is I, and here, uh, this is for our Patreon members. Uh, look for look out for this spot. Hopefully, it makes TV. But I'm in there, right? I forget which Von Eric it was. It, 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 Kevin Kevin Von Eric's sons mm-hmm. were amazing. Work for uh, MLW, uh, and they mu- both. I forget which one. I, I just spun one around. I threw the fucking claw hold on him. Oh, it's amazing! <laughs> I threw the claw. I I spun <laughs> around. I went, I spun him around. I went, don't sell. And I threw the fucking claw on him. Like, I'm fucking, ah, fuck, yeah. I, t- I said, smack my hand away. He smacks my hand away, and then he puts the fucking claw on me. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Somebody call, somebody call the police. Somebody call a cop. <laughs> you know, That's just amazing. Try, trying to pop him, you know. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was trying not to give it away too much on uh, social media, but then people start posting the videos, and I was like, man, I got yeah. posts. I asked uh, who I, so the video I posted. I asked permission to uh, repost it, and he's like, "Oh, please, yes." And I reposted that, and uh, I got a lot of love from that. Uh, it it that was clip. a, it, it really like I said before, like it was like a goosebumps video. Like you, you, there's yeah. I, I joked with the Road Warrior pop, but it really was <laughs> like you came out there. The stages, and if no one's seen this, you can go on Meanie's social media, and you'll find it. You know, at Blue Meanie BWO, um, and. Yes. It, it it really it's the the stages of the pop were just so mm. cool, you know. There's the excitement because it's BWO because it's music because it's an ECW guy in the ECW arena, and then the pop for you when you're at when it was actually <laughs> you coming around the bend there that you know it was cool man it was really yeah. it was cool I'm very fortunate. I have, then, well, thank you. I'm very fortunate, man. Um, there's a lot of talent on that show. Uh, there was a lot of talent in the ring when I got there. Uh, when I got out there, fucking shout out to Zicky Dice, Zicky Dice, who's awesome. Mm. Uh, me and him were uh, bonding while we just sat around and did nothing all day waiting for the show. <laughs> and uh, you know, thank you to MLW, thank you to Court, thank you to uh, MSL, who uh, I guess my main contact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank, thank you to everybody who uh, thought it. You know. Made an investment in me coming on that show and uh, being the, uh, well, I guess that's the thing, you know, ECW, I'm local. Uh, I don't need a plane ticket. I don't need a hotel. So I'm a cheap date. So, yeah, but but here's the thing. You've been, (laughs) how many times in a row now you've been like a surprise there? And the cool thing about it is it doesn't get old. It's almost become a, I feel like a thing now for fans where they're anticipating the blue meanie surprise, right? Yeah. Like they, that's, so, uh, uh, note to anybody running shows in Philly. <laughs> I'm available. Uh, like I said, I'm a cheap date. Um, no, but seriously, uh, thank you. Zicky Dice was awesome. Uh, the whole roster is awesome. Well, uh, they got a good crew there. And like I posted on social media the other day, don't sleep on MLW. No. Um, and uh, this isn't a slight at WWE. This is not a slight at AEW. They get a lot. AEW and WWE get the the most attention because, I guess, because of the fake Wednesday Night Wars, which was, really wasn't a war. It was just like a 
It was a tussle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I believe uh, the Wednesday but, Night Tiddlywinks is a t-shirt available at pressingtees.com slash mind of the meaning. Thank God one of us has a memory. Thank God you have a memory. Um, it is, uh, not look at the big brains the on used to, but <laughs> <laughs> look at the big brains on Josh. Um, but seriously, I, this isn't not a slight at WWE or AEW, but you know, there's other wrestling out there. MLW is a great promotion. Mm-hmm. You know, shit, Ring of Honor, all these promotions that are out there are available. Impact, as you know? we're, yeah, Support, as we're recording, so, Impact just put on a great, a great show. The Slam of amazing. And I, I feel bad because, like, I know I've been critical of them. Uh, the current regime, uh, Impact, really has, hasn't done anything wrong. It's just, like, I got lingering effects from the TNA days sure. and stuff <laughs> like that, you know. I love Scott Demore. Uh, me and Scott go back to when I first broke into the business, when I was training at Al's, and he would come down and do Al's shows and stuff like that. And Scott Demore was on the first show I was ever in. And speaking of... Royal Rumbles, like my first show had its version of the Royal Rumble, and me and Scott Demore on you know, my first show were messing around. I got a photo somewhere. He took off my tights and put them over my head. Uh, <laughs> as a rib, that whole thing was a big rib fest. But um, yeah, man, there's, no. uh, I, and this is you know this is me putting out, thanking MLW and t- just telling people, hey, don't sleep on them. Promote, you know, I, I want to see MLW in the same conversations and stuff like yeah. that. And they deserve it. They got the talent. They're moving over to vice. Well, I don't know if they're leaving B in, but I know they're going to start airing on vice, which is huge. Uh, I'm a big fan Seriously. of the vice network, you know, between dark side of the ring and documentaries. Mm-hmm. And all the, I love documentaries. I love vice. So, uh, yeah, MLW's doing amazing things. They really are. And I think that like, look, you, you know, you go on, wrestling Twitter and you see all this like this like cesspool of negativity and you know yeah. about wrestling and stuff but then you see things like you know I mentioned and, and we're recording this on on July 19th um so this will be airing a week from today uh but you know money in the bank was last night um we just that was the second WWE show to have fans but smackdown this past Friday you know Vince McMahon comes out Everyone, oh, Vince is out of touch. Vince doesn't know what he's doing. Vince is that that music hits and that building exploded. You know, like it's right. The way I look at it is you don't have to like saying MLW is great is not a negative towards anybody else. It has nothing to do with anything. They they can yeah. all be great. And guess what? If you don't like some of them, that's fine. Just don't watch it. There are plenty of television right. shows out there that are up for awards every year, and I go, I never saw that. Or a movie, and right. I go, yeah, it didn't really interest me. I, like, yeah. I don't need to take them down a peg or two. Like, good, yeah. go get your award. Go, you know, I hope you're really successful. Just because I'm not into it doesn't, you know. So, yeah, I think check out MLW. Check out all these different promotions, but definitely, you know, go watch MLW with Meanie on there. I'm excited to see it. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why I did that preamble of this isn't a slight yeah. on WWE and AEW because apparently if you say you like one thing, that means you hate everything <laughs> in, in the social media world. Yep. And that's why I try to tell people, I mean, social media is social media, but it's not, it's a it's a percentage of the wrestling fandom, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes it might not even be diehards. It could be like a, a fan who sees, a lot of times... I notice when a group of people are really passionate about something, some people will tag on or hop in the conversation because they want to be a part of the the conversation that's going on, you know? Yeah. And uh, they're not necessarily invested in the thing like the original person talking about, but, hey, a lot of people are talking about Maybe I'll say something and get noticed, you know? Yep. And that's, that's basically what, you know, social media is i i equate it to uh the days when i was in wwe and before 9 11 anybody could go through security and stuff like that and you know we go to a gate to fly out or either either arrive or fly out and there would be fans at our gate like they would know yeah and then like 
we're signing autographs for all these wrestling fans, but there's a lot of people in the, the area that sees this thing that's going on around us. They don't know what it is, but they want to be a part of it. And a lot of times people come over, hey, can I have your autograph? And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. And they go, uh, who are you? <laughs> and it's like, oh. And that's when I signed Boris Zukov. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it, it, it's a lot like that, you know. Some uh, some will be the rage on Twitter. Back in the day when hashtag wars used to be a thing, you know, <laughs> change, change a word in your favorite movie with poop, you know, whatever. People who were, normally wouldn't have been invested hopped in on that, that hashtag because they wanted to be a part of something. Yep. And that's the same thing with, I, I believe, with wrestling social media where a lot of people, like, are talking about something. And, you know, people are on the side going, oh, what's going on over there? Let me let me get involved. Yeah. And then this, uh, social media is so weird, man. It really uh, is. Yeah. It's, 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 there, there's there's things I'm not even going to, you know, publicly sell for. But, like, I see people re- respond to stuff. And I'm like, what did that have to do with anything with this post? <laughs> it's just like, yeah. you know, somebody's just, you know, hey, I got to say something to somebody. You know. The best is you've got these people who know nothing, about, especially in wrestling. It's like they know absolutely nothing about wrestling, but they're on there explaining to you about yeah. uh, explaining. They're explaining to like Lance Storm and explaining to like a Chris Jericho and all these people. Yeah, the way or Taz. I see people like always explaining to Taz like why someone's not being booked right or how they should have done. And it's like, dude, what? Like, I, I think back. Like as a like, I couldn't even imagine like once upon a time, had I been like during like the Monday Night Wars, and I'm like tweeting to uh, to Triple H and just like here's the problem with what's going on. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you don't know anything. <laughs> so stop. You know. Yeah. Um. But I, I, I well, I love when somebody goes so and so deserves a push. Yeah. And that's you know, and I'm not talking about anything current or whatever. But like I've seen it over the history, people go. Well, so and so deserves a push. You go, okay, but does do you think that person can handle the push? Right. You know, there's, you know, um, it's one thing to be really good. You know, when there's the pressure's not on, mm-hmm. but you know, there's a lot of times in wrestling when the the lights get a little bit brighter and the, the focus gets a little bit more on you. Some people either excel or they they shrink yep. in that moment. You know, look uh, like like Ben Simmons. Um, <coughs> uh, he looks great during the regular season, but uh, you know when he has a clear slam dunk, <laughs> he could do. He passes the ball because he doesn't want the attention. Um, <laughs> you know, excuse I, me. Let, let me be a smart mark for a second. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me be a it, hypocrite. It we are all, you know, Monday morning quarterbacks to an extent, right? about something, about sports, about wrestling, about a television show, about whatever it is. We're all, we all have something that we're passionate about, that we have an opinion on. There yeah. are plenty of times, I'm sure, you know, if I put on, you know, we're recording this on a Monday, if I, if I put on Raw tonight and I'm sitting there with my wife, I'm sure I will say to her, and she wouldn't give a shit about anything I'm saying, but <laughs> I feel like, I, you know, I'm sure there'd be things would be like, oh, why'd they do that? They shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have... The difference is, I'm not going to go on Twitter and tell them. I might bitch about it to myself, you know, and just be like, oh, that was stupid. They shouldn't do that, because that's part of fandom, and that's okay, you know? Right, right. But keep it because just because it's my opinion doesn't mean I'm right. And just because it's my opinion doesn't mean that, you know, because I saw this microcosm of something that I know the whole picture. You know, these promotions are, are you, know, you talk about the guy needing a push, right? Like, well, what's the bigger picture? What's the bigger plan? Maybe right. that push can't happen now because there's a push for three other people that are that is planned with a, a, a set, you know, so I don't know. And for all the people who say kayfabe's dead, uh... Sorry, if unless you're in on the booking meetings, there's still yep. kayfabe because yep. nobody knows. The only th- reason why you know something is going to happen is because it happened. You, you don't know it. People watch the show because they don't know ahead of time what's going to happen. I'll, I'll they watch you. to see what's going to happen, but they don't have no idea what happens until that hand hits three. 
yep. on the mat, you know? Yep. Or they yep. ring for the bell, or that there's a tap out, you know? Nobody knows. That's why 60,000 people still go to WrestleMania every year, and why every indie promotion around the world flocks around and mm-hmm. gets the WrestleMania rub for their independence. You know? Yeah, it, it's, you know, I'm, I'm going to be this weekend, so by the time you hear this, it will have already happened, but... Um, I'm going to be at my first GCW show doing a, a fight and focus for GCW. Awesome. Um, <laughs> and I'm just like, all right, well, where can I set up to be as far away from getting hit with shards of glass <laughs> as possible? Um, buy, buy, a po- buy a poncho. Yeah, I'm going to be there in my suit and tie standing out like a sore thumb. Um, but the reason I bring it up is, I mean, the, the Matt Cardona and Nick Gage feud that's been going on, like, like I know, I know wrestling's work. I get it. But I am terrified for Matt Cardona <laughs> going into this thing. So, I, you know, it, it's, K, kayfabe is alive and well. It's, it, it might yeah. look different than it used to, but it's still there. It's, it's still, because it's, it's, I mean, one of our Patreon members asked, uh, it was, uh, uh, Liam asked, um, did you guys catch money in the bank? And I did, you yeah. know, I don't know. I don't think Meanie, you didn't get a, I didn't get a chance to, I watched the first like five minutes or so. Um, I, I watched, I watched it. Um, Oh, you did in oh, my okay. peripheral, uh, in my peripheral. Like, there's- Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I knew you were, you were super busy. So I didn't know if you had a chance, um, but I, uh, I was watching it while I was super busy. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> um, but, uh, I had my tablet, I had my tablet. But I'm sure by the time people are listening to this, you know, I, I will have watched it. But just a little bit that I did, first of all, you know, and I want to talk to you about in a second fans being back. But, um, but man, things like, you know, talking about kayfabe and stuff, John Cena, yeah. dude, like, you know, didn't see that coming. And it's, you know, it, it's just, yeah. it's that to me, that's wrestling and i know we're all flying high right now because the fans are back and every little you know entrance is incredible and you know what yeah. i think i think this could be really helpful and this i want your opinion on this because yeah. i've been thinking about it they're going they're going to be in a different we'll focus strictly on like wwe um or a w or whoever but let's say wwe just for argument's sake they're yeah. going to be in a different a town in a different building for the next however many months, right? And every single one of those buildings are going to be people who have not seen anyone live in almost two years. <laughs> right. Yeah. This could this could be that boost to get the WWE back to where it needs to be. Because it could yeah. get because those fans make they make or break a show. And we and, and Abs- that was never absolutely. more apparent than during the pandemic. But the fans yeah. can make or break a show. And I just felt like this energy, there has been an energy and an excitement that is it's it's palpable. Everybody, uh, from you know, the referees to the ring announcers to the announcers them, themselves to the wrestlers, everyone, it is just you can just feel that energy coming through the TV. Do you feel think- the power? <laughs> oh yeah, Biggie. Hey, Biggie. Biggie's uh, taking that that next step now, uh, which yeah. is great because he's he's incredible. But uh, do you think that that this? Because ha- eventually, look, obviously, eventually, this is going to fade out. We're going to get back to normal, and it's not going to be as exciting because you will have just seen them before. But do you think we have a chance to really, if, if creativity? is where it needs to be that like this could bring wrestling to a, a bring it back up a few levels from where it's been. It's like, uh, what, what's the story? How can I miss you if you don't go away? Mm-hmm. So wrestling didn't really go away, but it was, it, it was there. Uh, there was no fans there. It was kind of hard to watch. I was intrigued the first maybe month of no fans, but after that I was like, <sighs> I feel like I'm watching, you know, uh, a practice or something like that because there's nobody there. You know, it's just the, the wrestlers. But uh, it's like you said, it's you know, the fans are back. It's kind of like you know, having sex with an ex girlfriend. You know, it's like 
it's great to get reacquainted, mm-hmm. but eventually you're going to start noticing those flaws all over again. Yep. <laughs> and the reason why you're going to remember the reason why you, you, you guys broke up. And then your wife gets um, pissed at you and you're just yeah. like, it's not someone new. Yeah. You know? yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no. Or wait, did I misunderstand? Um, no, no, no. <laughs> this is not uncharted territory. Um, but no, like, you know, the fans are back. Everything's going to get a pop. Yeah, because they're booking all these cities that haven't been to in over a year. Mm-hmm. So those those folks, you know, they were in uh, Houston. Then they were you know, at Fort Worth last night. Mm-hmm. Each town's going to want probably want to outdo the last town. Uh-huh. Like, oh, you know. And then, but once they cycle back to you know city one again, it might be a little bit different. Like that's why that's why I kind of I said on the show, you know, maybe last week or two weeks ago. You know, uh, the fans are a good barometer if something's working or not. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be hard these first couple of weeks to figure out what's good or not just because people are happy to be out of the house, happy to see live wrestling. Uh, and and, and it also makes you wonder, like, how, what have they been, you know, holding back on, sitting on? Like, yeah, I wanna, we really want to do this, but let's save it for the fans. Yeah. You know, um, that's why my heart breaks for Drew McIntyre. He didn't. He didn't get to have a uh, a championship run in front of fans, which ki- kills me. No, it, it, it. And I think Drew would be at a different level right now had the fans been there. I mean, you look back yeah. at when he won the Rumble. They showed that last night. It was part of like their, you know, um, because that was really. Wasn't that in Houston? That was like that was in yeah. Texas, and like. Man, you look at that and where Drew was headed, and, and, and it really sucks, but he'll find his way back for sure. I mean, because oh, he, he can't keep talent like that down. But um, And I think, I actually think it's a wise thing to get him out of the picture right now. Get him out of the that title picture and, you know, let's wait a little while because when that opportunity comes again, now we're going to get back to the point where the fans are going to want to see it again. We're kind of, kind of do that over again, and and look, man, remember, rebuild, re- re- rebuild, mm-hmm. and remember, this pandemic was supposed to be two weeks, you know, <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. something you have to remember too. Is like, it's easy to look back now and be critical of this or critical of that, but this was a, an evolving process of WWE going, you know, okay, well, that's fine, we'll continue with this because you know, in about two weeks, we'll be back to normal. And, you know, and people will be excited. And then it's like, okay, well, in about a month, you know, we'll be back. So let's just stay the course with what we're doing here because by SummerSlam, hey, everything's going to be great. We're going to have, you know, yeah. Orton and Drew and, and, and it'll be, you know, all that. And it's like, nope, SummerSlam's in front of no one. And, it's, and it just kept going. And I think, unfortunately, yeah. they did waste a lot of things that they would have loved to have done in front of a crowd. But at the same time, they still were putting on a show. So you couldn't. I feel like the last couple of weeks of WWE TV has been a holding pattern. Um, yeah, but we're 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 just we're uh, like when you're flying home, we're experiencing a delay yeah. in our uh, approach. Uh, we'll yep. we'll be circling until uh, we can give them the go ahead to go home. Yeah, and that's so. what it was, I think. And and you know, but but now we're back, and it's just exciting. It's an exciting time, and I just hope it is. all wrestling fans can just sit like. Just appreciate what we didn't have for the last, you know, almost, you know, for the last year and a half. Let's appreciate savor what Savor it. What, you know, and say, yeah, and savor it now and just drop the negativity. And, hey, they're going to be back and they announced they're going to be back in Philly. Um, yeah. You know, I'm sure Meanie yeah. will be there. I, I'm know. available. <laughs> Me, yeah. <laughs> Hey, me, start posting that video again at MLW because that, <laughs> that pop there. I know I'll be luck. I'll be popping if uh, uh, <laughs> Meanie comes out there on SmackDown. A couple people, you know, mentioned that video to me from there, so I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, they're yeah. like, oh, that, that that MLW clip looked pretty good. I was like, yeah, it did, did, did. yeah, oh, it looks really good. <laughs> you know, you saw that nice BWO on that really big screen. Now imagine if it was on an even bigger screen, like a screen that was like a billion feet tall and all. You know, yeah, it could yeah. happen. <laughs> it's, you know, it's 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 exciting to. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's good to have the fans back. Because, like, I, I a lot of times I'll say, I've said it, you know, um, 
shit. Uh, sometimes I'll, you know, WrestleMania three is prime example of Steamboat and Savage. Sometimes I'll watch the match, and sometimes I'll watch the crowd reacting to the match. Right. You know, there's so many. There, the, the fans are such an important uh, part of the the puzzle of a match because, you know, you don't always, you know, uh, ooh, excuse me, you don't always, you know. Uh, you take for granted, you know, the, the, the fans, you you think the fans will always be there. And we just learned sometimes the fans won't be there, but you know, just in that, in, in the steamboat match, you just watch emotions pour out, yep. you know, especially with the build up to that match. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to have the fans back. Hopefully, uh, you know, everything that was being held back is on, uh, on schedule to be, uh, released, yep. you know, in front of the fans and, uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know, um, I mean, this we're still totally not out of the woods. I no. mean, there's still other things going on with the, the virus and the uh, Delta variant and, or, and stuff like that. But. And if I may, like, we've talked about this before, I mean, and, like, I, you know, we don't get political or anything. Right. And I hate to, like, judge people, but I do want to just point out a fact. Over 99% of the people who have been hospitalized with COVID in the last... I think it's like the last couple of weeks or so over 99% are people who did not get vaccinated. Right. Whatever your opinions or whatever, there's something to that. Take care of yourselves. You know, it, it, this yeah, is my yeah. opinion. If you want to listen, Hey Josh, you're a moron, whatever. That's fine. But it's my opinion. Get vaccinated. Come on. We're, we want to be back. We want to be back in the world. It, it was so nice. You know, I did yesterday, I was doing the A7FL for fight and was there for, the, you know, out there on the field and with people and getting to interview people face to face, which I haven't done, you know, in, in a really, really long time. And it's just nice to be back out there and not be worried, not be scared, you know, that you're going to get sick or that you're going to make a family member, a loved one sick or something like just... Come on, and if you're not going to get vaccinated, and if that and that is your choice and that is your right, then please wear a mask. Yeah, yeah. I hate to, I I hate to harp on it, but I feel like, aren't we past that point where yeah. it should just be common common knowledge? You yeah. Know? But uh, and the people telling you not to get vaxxed, trust me, they're vaxxed, and they're <laughs> they're talking. <laughs> How do you know the vaccine will work? Well, you got it yep. too, asshole. <laughs> you, t Mister TV guy, who also got vaccinated, telling people not to get vaccinated. Shut the fuck up. Um, look, I, I, I had this conversation with a friend, and I, I, I we'll we'll get off this, you know. Uh, but growing up as a child, every adult I know had this little divot in their fucking arm. And, and as a kid, I go, oh, what was that? Oh, that was my polio shot. Well, I have to get a polio shot? No, because people got vaccinated and it fucking went away. Yep. Let's take the fucking yeah. shot. Let's get this fucking over with. And let's try to get back to a normal life. I'm, I'm tired of the fucking games. Yeah. You know, just. Such a great stay. point of what you're. Uh, of what you're saying is because, like, you think of things like polio, and we look and we go, "Oh well, of course there's no polio. There's a vac a vaccine was made for it. Everyone got vaccinated, got rid of polio. Like, it is a, like of course that's just a part of history. And for some reason, people can't associate the idea of getting vaccinated. You know, and we have our, our Patreon member Liam here says he's going for his tomorrow. He finally caved. He's doing it for his daughter. And you know what? Yeah. And that right there. That's the point, too. Like, even if you look at it and you go, eh, I don't know, whatever. Like, there are all these kids out there who can't get vaccinated. Yeah. So get vaccinated. You know, I know of somebody who recently who got COVID in the last week because they chose not to get vaccinated. Their wife is vaccinated. And it's not a friend of mine, but it's somebody, you know, that I, I was told of. And um, their kids aren't vaccinated. And you look and you go, what are you doing? Like, just take it, get it for your children. Dude, I would take any experimental vaccination if, it, if there was a chance of it protecting my kids. Like, you know, it, it, it's, you just, like, come on. It, but, so Liam, proud I, of I, you. Yeah, man. 
Uh, and they're just the people. Oh, they rolled it out too quick. Well, uh, COVID and the coronavirus has always been around. It's just different yeah. variants, right? Yeah. You know, the, the big conspiracy when COVID came out was, how come it says the coronavirus on Lysol? Yeah, because it's been around. Yeah. Uh, and and there's, there, there was vaccines for that. Because Lysol version. knew something. And Lysol, Lysol was in it. COVID-19. Yeah. Oh, oh, great. Here's another fucking nut job yeah. conspiracy. I like conspiracy theories until conspiracy theorists were fucking ruined them for me. Um, <laughs> dude, I was all about them. Now it's yeah. just like, how do you know what happened? The cops haven't even gotten there yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Live active shooter. False flag. The fucking cops haven't even gotten there. How do you... No, uh, motherfuckers ruin my fun. Uh, I like I love a good conspiracy, but yep. god damn man, let's uh, let's deal with uh, logistics. Um, yep. But seriously, yeah, get a fucking shot, man. Just I'm tired. I'm done. I'm done with the conspiracy. Oh, they're gonna put a chip on you. They want to put a fucking chip in you. They just fucking yeah. look at your cell phone. You know. <laughs> We've talked about this before. I remember there was in Florida, there was this like, it, it kind of went viral, uh, no pun intended. Of course, Florida. Of course, Florida. But there was like these people at, at a, a, I don't know, they were at a meeting. One of the things that, uh, what's his name from the, the former referee, you know, he was at crime. Yeah, uh, that guy. Children. Yeah. Um, but like, they were there, uh, and they're talking about like how the, the having to stay six feet, feet apart, this is a government type of thing so they can scan you and i remember watching it and they're like and i'm looking at some going like you you both are com you're complaining that you have to wear a mask and you're also saying you have to stay six feet apart so the government can scan your faces but the government's also telling you to wear a mask which you don't like so why can the government tell you to wear a mask they shouldn't be able to meanwhile they want you to be six feet apart so they can scan your face but can't scan your face because you're wearing a mask and i'm like my head is exploding. I'm like, what, what's none next? Of this, it yeah, I'm he's like, going to ban ho ban Halloween. Uh, yeah, like none of this makes sense. And then, like you just pointed out with your phone, you want the government to scan your face. That's how. That's literally how I unlock my phone. Is I allow my phone to scan my face. All right. And also, well, uh, what are you hiding? Right. I'm not hiding anything. I don't <laughs> care. The government can listen. Listen in on my phone conversations. What the yeah. worst you're going to walk away with is extreme boredom. Like that's it. Yeah. You know. So it's like my joke. Uh, yeah, somebody could rob me, but they'd be fucking practicing. Uh, yeah, you can listen. <laughs> you can listen in on my conversations, but you're just going to hear a lot of fucking fart jokes uh, <laughs> and actual farts yeah. uh, <laughs> and possible sharts. Oh, farts and sharts and. Charts. charts and everything in between. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> or oh, here's my favorite one, the Walmart fart. Yep. <laughs> I still haven't taken that one off the board. Uh, but, yeah, man, just let's get back to normal. Let's get back into smelling each other's farts. Um, yeah, man. You know. I haven't smelled a good fart in a long time. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, I was just telling somebody how I stopped the concert with a fart. Uh, I think I've told that story on here. That was one of the first stories I think that you told on here. And then uh, we have a, I, I have a, a con concert canceled T-shirt available at wrestlingtees.com slash mind That's of the right. meanie. Um, That's right. I was I was in a group chat and uh, something came up and I, I have various groups I talked to and uh, I was telling you know how I stopped the concert with a fart and just for shits and giggles I reached out to one of the people who was there I remember was there. He's like, it wasn't me, it was my brother. And he replied, he confirmed that it was absolutely true. <laughs> and, the singer, and the singer could not continue to sing. <laughs> oh, my God. And I shared that with the group, and they just fucking died laughing. It's so, it so much fun. It, the, best, the best stories are the ones you can confirm and just, like, show visual proof. Yep, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was uh, the Atomic Punks, which two members went on to become Steel Panther. Which they just announced their bass players leaving, which is kind of crazy, but yeah, yeah. Steel, um, Pan Steel Panther, uh, great band. Shout out. So speaking of shout outs, uh, Al Snow just had a birthday, and Al is uh, currently in our green room, our blue room, which is oh yeah, uh, 
He's had a birthday. Yeah. Was it yesterday as we record this? Yeah, I just checked in. Week. He's uh, I just checked into the blue room. He's uh, having some of the veggie tray that we left for him. Excellent. And, uh, Excellent. I think he'll, he'll, he should be ready to come on any moment. Um, yeah. But yeah, he had a great birthday. It, it was his legit birthday. Uh, <laughs> a lot of times they like to. Ri- yeah. A lot of times they like to the, work. Birthday. Well, no, a lot of times you know people like to rib him when they're out eating, and they tell the wait staff, "Hey, it's uh, uh it's Al's birthday," uh, and he gets the free cake, and he's he's sitting there, like Dave Hero. Shout yeah. out to Dave Hero. Love him. Or uh, you know, he'll they'll be, they'll go out to like a restaurant and Dave will be like, oh, I gotta go take a piss. And he goes off to take a piss. He tells the waitress, Hey, it's his birthday. <laughs> and you know, he comes back from the bathroom and all of a sudden, happy, happy birthday. Bye, bye, bye. And awesome. Al's like Al looks at him and goes, You motherfucker. <laughs> but yeah. he wants the cake he wants the cake. <laughs> so, yep. So <laughs> so you what do you, what would you do for cake? You know, uh, yeah. Ho- hopefully, I didn't just uh, expose a fraud, and the uh, the restaurant comes back and they collect their cake. <laughs> uh, hey, cake shout police. out to uh, to Dave Hero's son Cal. Have you? Been oh my god! Following yes. what he's been doing. Yes, I have. Guys, just uh, uh, w- man, what promotion hasn't he worked for in the last week? Uh, I wish I was more vocal about it and congratulating him, but uh, yeah, man, he's doing great. I, it's, I remember seeing him when he was, you know, you know, up to my chest. Yeah. <laughs> he was like a li- little cow, Fan, fanny cow? pack kid. Now, yeah, dude, man, it, it, it's it's really cool. I had the opportunity to meet him the last AEW show I did back in it was awesome. the end of February of 2020, and um, we were going and doing for fight. We we're doing something, and I was working with Dave there, and. Uh, and they told me, they're like, yeah, we, we've got somebody who's going to be there to help you do the camera work. I was like, oh, cool. And it ended up being Cal. And I knew that nice. he was, you know, I knew that he was training and, and, and whatnot and we had some good conversations. And he was behind the camera. At one point, we got him in front of the camera and had some fun there. And, uh, and like, Dustin Rhodes gave him a shout out during one of the interviews and did a fun thing with him and uh, Austin Gunn. Um, but the, he was so... I'm always just so impressed with like the younger, the young kids, you know, but it makes me feel like an old guy, but you know, but like the, but the young people breaking into the business who have their, their head on straight, who are just like, you know, yeah, you want me to hold the camera? I'll hold the camera. Hey, you want me to just, you know, pull this cable over here? I'll do that. Oh, you want me on camera? I'll be on camera. And just, I was so impressed with how, I mean, because he knew everyone. He grew up around there. So he yep. in that business, and so he knew everybody, and he easily could have been like, "Oh man, I want to hang out here. I'm not, I'm not some, you know, I'm not just going to be a gopher running and getting coffee, you know." Like, but he just put in the work, and it it, it just shows the work ethic he had, just helping Absolutely. out backstage and helping out with fight there for for nothing other than just, uh, "Hey man, do you mind helping?" And it was just it was so cool to. To see now a year later from that was the coolest thing I saw him on AEW because I'm like the last time I was at AEW, he was literally holding my camera for me while I was interviewing people. And now here he is in the ring on their show, having matches, yeah. living his dream. And I, I'm just, uh, you know, so yeah, you brought up Dave and it just made me think about it. I'm just really, I, really proud of him. I love Dave Hero. Yeah. Yeah. I love Dave Hero. I love Cal. Uh, I love Dave's cousin, cousin Jack, uh, Jack Koshik, who used, who runs concerts as Jack Koshik presents. He used to do the uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest, and that's mm-hmm. kind of how I became, you know, uh, you know, got to know them a little bit better. I, I had done signings for Dave back in the day. He had a, a, a store in Wisconsin, and then I started doing the Milwaukee Metal Fest, and I've been friends with Dave over you know twenty years, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to see young Cal out there, you know, and, and, and that's just the sign of a good person. Somebody who isn't like, uh, yeah, I won't be holding your camera because right. my dad knows so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. Uh, no, I'll be over here. Nope. No, the best thing to do in, this, in the wrestling business is make yourself useful. It, it, wrestling is more than just in the ring. If yep. you can know different assets of the business, Besides just the wrestling, inside it out, you can have a career 
you know, before you, you start wrestling, while you're wrestling, and after wrestling, because yep. eventually, mother, Na- your, you know, your, your, not mother, Na- your body's going to tell you, hey, uh, yeah, this isn't working out. You need to stop wrestling. Well, hey, can I produce? Mm-hmm. Hey, can I just run a camera? Can, hey, what, what can I do? I love the wrestling business so much. I'm willing to do anything to be a part of it. And Cal, Cal Hero has uh, really shown that he's willing to do anything for this the wrestling business, and that's why he's so respected. When, when I uh, – people have asked, like, hey, do you have any regrets from your career? And, like, one of the biggest regrets I've always had was when I was in OVW and I got injured. And we've talked about this, I think, before, but I separated my shoulder during uh, during a match down there. And – my focus became 100% on, I have to get back in the ring. I have to get back in the ring. I have to get back in the ring. Yeah. And I look at it now and I go, why the hell did I not walk back there to Danny Davis or Rip Rogers or Al Snow or something and go, hey, so I'm injured. Do you think I could do like commentary or would you like me to manage somebody? Or, hey, can I sit back here while you and watch you guys edit and see like how we're learning yeah. that? Or do you mind if I'm up there where the camera is and just kind of learning a little, like, why wasn't I just basically saying, hey, guys, I'm injured. I can't wrestle. What can I do? What can I do right. to help you? You need me to go grab you a bottle of water? Let me do like. And it's one of those things that when you see, you know, and I know we're really putting Cal over here, but when you see somebody like, like that, and there's so many people in the business now that it's so great to see that where they're just, they have their head on straight where they realize, because I, I was told one time, uh, by somebody over at fight when I was doing a bunch of different things for them. And he said, you know, you can write your own ticket. One, if, if you do a little bit of everything, though, if you learn every aspect of everything, then when the time comes and this opens up or that opens up, you can do it. You can go right yeah. in there. And, you know, and it's, and it, it's true with me, you know, the, the opportunities I've had with fight now, because uh, as a producer, you know, and, and in the yeah. beginning, it was just like, uh, hey, you guys want to air my So Says Sure Enough show? You know, and yeah. it's and it's turned into all of these things because you stay open to it and you stay humble with it. You don't go in with an ego. And, yeah. and the opportunities will present itself. And if you're ready to accept them, you know, but. Uh, I, I call them small victories. Yeah. Uh, you do this. It's a victory. And you do one thing. It could lead to another thing comes a little bit of more of a victory. Yep. The next victory might not be as big as the last one, but it's still forward progress. Yeah. You know, positive yards. Yep. You know, like in football. Positive yards, it's, absolutely. He, yeah. Always go for those positive yards, no matter what it is. You know, uh, I regret when I went to, to Memphis for WWE, not going, hey, uh, JR, can I maybe try commentary? You know, because, you know, they had me doing, I lost 160 pounds. I didn't look like the blue meanie anymore, but Hey, maybe I could become an on air personality. Yeah. You know, uh, why you guys are trying to figure something out in the ring. Maybe I, I'll try this over here and who knows? I could have been backstage doing interviews because yep. I look totally different. You know, I could have just dyed my hair a different color and been totally, somebody else. Totally repackaged. Yeah. yeah. Something else. Yeah. And I think I, you know, I think I could contribute to most wrestling promotions behind the scenes, whether as sure. a muse or a producer stuff like that absolutely and that's my one regret you know i wish i could have just said hey can i give this a shot if it works awesome if not i'll go back to focus on being whatever they wanted me to be you know but the nice thing is that you know there's always still time that's the other lesson in it is that you know when you think oh man i made a mistake well i should have done this i should have done that and then fast forward 10, 15, 20 years later, you get another opportunity. And now you've learned from your mistakes. And it's only a mistake if you don't learn from it, you know? Yeah. Because you learn from it, then it was a learning experience, not a mistake. But, uh, yeah. but with that, would you like uh, to answer some questions with a little segment that, uh, that we've <laughs> named Ask Meanie Anything? I would love to. Let's do it. It's time to ask me anything. Ask me something! <laughs> Alrighty. Um, well, first question here from, uh, from the great and powerful James Sorensen, um, the Sorensen level Sorensen level, uh, by the way, James, you got some shirts coming your way. 
Don't worry. Um, <laughs> got your message. Uh, James says some. Gra- I mean, man, he he always has such nice things to say. Um, and for he the record, is- James, he 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 was asking. He wasn't aware about Monday morning meanie. That was a last minute thing, um, and that was my schedule and meanie accommodating. And I'm so glad that we have so many uh, of our great Patreon members here with us. Uh, and I'm glad you're here with us, James. Um, he says, hope Josh and Meanie are doing well. You're both truly great and talented. Uh, Meanie is truly one of the all time greatest entertainers. I absolutely agree with that. And then James asks, are you guys going to all out in Chicago? Um, I am not. Um, um, unless he's just kayfabing and you know, yeah, he'll no, just, seriously, I'm not, book, he'll just I'm, I'm, not book, I'm not booked, Terry. Uh, <laughs> I'll just be uh, home just, jumping I, on his trampoline with uh yeah. with a couple of lightweights getting ready. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um no, nah, I, I seriously I, I I won't be there. Uh not that I don't wanna. But uh yeah, I won't be there. Um and I don't know. Uh I think right now it's like a fifty fifty. I think uh there is a meeting going on down in Huntsville. Uh, will have <laughs> happened by the time you guys are hearing this. Um, that is basically, so I do stuff with, uh, ad free shows as you guys know, and Conrad. And then I also do stuff with fight TV and both of which are going to have a presence in Chicago. And I think there's a whole lot of people figuring out like, Hey, we've got this Josh guy who wants them on what day and when are we going to use them or whatever. And I'm sitting here going, let me know what's happening. So hopefully I'll be there. I'm actually really, really hoping to be there. Um, but I don't, I don't know what the plan is and I don't know if I am there. Uh, I honestly don't know which days I'd be there. So um, hopefully I'll know by the time you're, you're by the time everybody else is hearing this, but um, either way, uh, I mean, I would love to be able to be back there with AEW and, and to, See all of you guys. I know there's a top guy weekend going on. I'd love to be able to pop by and say hello to a lot of those people. And um, so we'll see. I'll let you know, James. Um, but no, we aren't. You know, we had, we had always hoped if there was a star cast that maybe we'd be doing something. There isn't a star cast, obviously. Um, and uh, so we won't have any uh, like a live show presence or anything. We're not going to be doing doing that. But uh but yeah, I'm hoping I I can go and uh, and as we know, meanies. Uh, if they have some sort of like, if you see a thing for a surprise entrant into something for all out, I think we all know who it is. So yeah, yeah check the silhouette uh, yeah. that they show. <laughs> if it's anything like you know the meanie dance, you know, yep. then you know, it's a dead <laughs> dead giveaway. Yep. Uh, let's see what else we have here. I know we have some other questions um, from our Patreon members, so I want to. I want to go. Uh, well, okay. Liam had asked earlier if we watched Money in the Bank. We answered that one. Already. Yes, I enjoyed um, it. Yeah, I'm, I enjoyed I'm, it minus minus the uh, little glitch with Peacock. But yeah, yeah, I heard a lot about that. There was a lot of Peacock issues. Uh, I didn't have that because yeah, I watched it later at night. I <laughs> started watching it, so I think they had fixed that. Yeah, just uh, a little crazy thing called close the app and reopen it. Uh, who knew? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you take what you do is you take the app out, you blow on it, <laughs> and you put it back in, <laughs> and you shake um, it, and then you just put it back in. Uh, James says, "I will be there if you are. Can we grab a drink together, Josh? Absolutely, one hundred percent." As our good friend Jeff Jarrett would say, um, "Yes, uh, that would be awesome, James. And if I am there, I will let you know." And uh, that will absolutely be on my schedule um, to grab a drink with you. Uh, that would be awesome, man. Uh, Andy Slichter, hashtag ask Meanie, is there anything you have ever looked forward to more than meeting me on Saturday? <laughs> uh, okay, the actual question. How sore were you from not wrestling with all the time out uh, of the ring? Uh, from oh, not wrestling yeah. with all that time out from the ring. How sore were you? Oh, brutal. Uh I saw your Tiger Bomb post. Yeah, I slathered myself with that uh, for a couple days. And then, you know, I was, you know, I'm an Aleve guy and Mm -hmm. CBD guy. So, yeah, I was definitely feeling it. Uh, I was feeling it 
that night. Uh, <laughs> all the excitement of, uh, you know, Hulk Hogan down to the ring and then uh, rolling in and just rolling around. Anyway, it, of course, yeah, I was sore, uh, mostly on my knees um, from years of moonsaulting. So they uh, they were like, fuck you. Um, yeah, I was definitely sore. Uh, it took a bit. That show was Saturday, maybe around Tuesday or Wednesday. I kind of felt back to normal, and that's you know I'm getting a lot, I get a lot of offers for bookings, and you know uh, I got to turn a lot of them down because you know it's just like man, you know I know what it, I, just from a little thing like uh, not a little thing, but just like I was in the the Rumble Riot for like eight minutes, and I know how I felt after that. Mm. <clears throat> I can't imagine, you know, uh, doing a lot of, you know, different things like that. I, so I'm, I'm being very picky where I go and travel to and work. Not that like I'm some kind of huge star. I just know my body, you know, um, and stuff like that. Yeah, man, just you gotta be, uh, be more selective now. <laughs> now that I'm a uh, 48, uh, I think I could still do a, a lot of things, but just, I can't be, I, I, I got to remind myself I'm not 20 anymore. Yeah. You know, I got, I got I feel to, like when you get in the ring, do you feel, do you feel like you're like with all that adrenaline when you got out in, in the, the ring, did you feel like, Hey, I'm, I'm, you could have been 20 year old meanie out there. Oh, with the adrenaline and the fans, I felt nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, once I walk through that curtain, I feel great. And yeah. there's something weird about walking the, the 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 ritual of walking through the curtain, being in front of fans. But once you get back through that curtain, you're just like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's so weird. It's a, this weird psychological thing, mm-hmm. you know. The the body does amazing things when it needs to, and right. uh, yeah. Oh, and I, yeah, I got hard weighed during the battle riot too, right. so. Uh, I got split open on the top of my head. It was an accident, uh, and I felt that for a couple of days. I had a good little knot on the top of my head. Uh, I was bleeding for a little bit, but the doc said, "Hey, you know, it's not really, you know, worth going to get stitches over." So I was yeah. like, "All right, you know." So I let it uh, naturally heal. But yeah, yeah, it's just amazing uh, what the body can do. You know, um, in regards to his first question. Uh, about have you ever looked forward uh, is there anything you've ever looked forward to more than meeting Andy Slichter on Saturday I want to see on social media a picture of you and Andy Slichter together because (laughs) it is this is one of the amazing things about this pandemic time Uh, like when I saw the thing on Smackdown where they're like uh, this is Dominic Mysterio's first time in his career wrestling in front of a WWE crowd and I was like wait what like and it yeah like it's insane The fact that you have been able to work so closely with Slichter on graphics and stuff for T-shirts for uh, Mind of the Meanie and for for ProSNTs.com slash Blue Meanie and all that stuff. And you guys have never met, you know? (laughs) And I think about the fact, you know, because Slichter and I have met and we've we've hung out before back in the the So Says Chernoff live studio days. Um but even then, like, God, now, like, all the stuff we've done with Slick, it's amazing that we haven't actually been in person. So I, I, I think the pod squad wants to see you and Andy Slichter uh, hanging out. So let's see if we can't yeah. get a picture and get that on social media. That'd be great. That'd be uh, awesome. Jonathan Chambers writes, uh, have either of you guys watched any good movies recently? Man, um... Trying to think of movies. Uh, I've been watching a lot of doc- documentaries. I've been watching the docu series on uh, pop music called "This Is Pop" on Netflix, which is really good. Uh, from the same p- people who did Metal Evolution. Um, movies. I, I don't think I've watched uh, a movie, movie like a storyline, plot, all that yeah. stuff, in in a while. Uh, I think, oh, I, I just saw, what's that new Nicolas Cage movie? Uh, Willy Wonderland or something like that? I don't know. And, <clears throat> it was it was interesting. 
not much of a plot other than uh, he's he, he's in this whole. Nicholas Cage is in the movie. He doesn't say one word, doesn't speak one line, but it's all action and it's it's pretty good. Oh, wow. uh, he he's like a hitman who's. Uh, it's kind of like the Banana Splits movie, where they kind of went dark, you know, with the Banana Splits, oh, wow. uh, where he goes. He's got to go clean up this uh, like a Chuck E. Cheese, but it's like the animatronic. A- animatronic animals are like murdering people Jesus. and he's got to like <laughs> he's got to kill them but he's obsessed with drinking this one drink and playing pin- a pinball machine in the back so in between breaks of killing all these animatronic animals wow. and he's uh playing pinball chugging these uh, this cafe brand of soda or whatever <laughs> and then it's just it's so weird it's weird but uh, it wasn't bad. It was interesting, and like like I said, he doesn't say one word throughout the whole movie, which is interesting. That's right. And it, and it pay- yeah. So I yeah, as far as movie, I had to you know bullshit my way around to try and figure out what I just watched recently. I just saw that, but it's yeah. pretty good. But you know, I haven't watched a movie in the in the longest time. Like I really have. I just finished uh, the season, the first season of uh, Loki. Um, I, I, yeah, I see everybody talking about that. That that was really good. Um, but yeah, I really don't have the time. Yeah, um, unless I'm I'm watching it while I'm doing other stuff. Yeah, I, I re, you know, yeah. just life's just so busy right now. Um, James Sorensen says, "Will Josh and Meanie ever have a movie?" Yeah, I <laughs> I think uh, who wouldn't want to make a movie about the last year of us sitting in two different rooms. <laughs> In front of a computer, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm not not sure. That not sure be, about that. Be exciting. Uh, the big yeah. the big action parts of the movie is like when we like get up and stretch our legs. Um, yeah, or where I say, "Oh, I got to take a piss." One yeah, time. I'll be right back. You know, um, well, actually, yeah, it is a movie. You're watching a live action documentary. Yeah, thing. that's what I'd say. You know what? That's it. This is this has been a movie. If you're a Patreon member at patreoncom slash of the meanie, then this is your movie. You, you can, uh, you know, since, you know, our, our episodes are up there on Patreon forever, just grab them all, splice them together, voila. <laughs> we, it's your, it's your, you got your own Ken Burns documentary. It's like 40 hours long or whatever. How, <laughs> I'm bad at math. You do the math, but, you know. Dude, I don't spl- even want to Splice them all together. How many hours? I would. Uh, somebody wants to do that math for us because this is episode 70 of how many hours we have done mind of the meanie and how many days of our lives have actually been mind of the meanie i'll get i'll give you a rough estimate at least from episode 19 until now because like here's a little inside baseball once I upload the files i saved the uh, stereo version mm. and, I, and i put it into a folder called mind of the meanie episodes raw version like ah. unedited it so from episode 90 19 until I guess sixty nine, six, right? Hee <laughs> hee. Uh, a hundred and fourteen hours, forty two minutes, and twenty seven seconds. How many hours did you say? A hundred and fourteen hours, forty two minutes, twenty seven seconds. So if we round that up to about one hundred and fifteen, just for that, just uh, for nineteen through sixty nine. Yeah, that's so, al- that's almost five days of our lives. So, yeah. I, I mean, we, I, I would say over a week of our lives have been recording Mind of the Meaning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just highlighted all the things, right-clicked, hit properties, looked at yep. the timestamp. And there were some episodes that I think actually went an entire week. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Man, those, really those fucking early episodes are crazy. Um, uh, Shackleford asked, do you remember when Stone Cold came and they gave him a Phillies jersey and had him do batting practice? Did WWE ever have Meanie do anything similar? Oh, I wish. I wish. I, I actually have a, a a button of Stone Cold wearing the Phillies jersey doing batting practice, and I it's pinned to one, one of my uh, Phillies flags downstairs. Very cool. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pre- I wish they did. Uh, I mean, when WrestleMania 15 was in town, they had me do local appearances and stuff like that. Like me and Goldust did a luncheon on a, a boat that went up and down the Delaware River. 
It was very romantic. Sure. Um, very romantic. Um, I wish. I wish. I did a lot of appearances around town because I worked for WWE and I, I contacted, hey, can you get me into this? Can you get me into that? <laughs> and, you know, my buddy would call back, hey, uh, one of our wrestlers wants to come to your event. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll some tickets. Awesome. You know, yeah. I wish. But uh, Mark and Dryden writes, uh, what past or present wrestling personality, living or not, would you like to have their own podcast or think would have been great to host one? Fucking Bobby Heenan. I was just going to say Bobby Heenan. That's, yeah. that's it. Could beginning, you imagine? End, beginning, middle, and end. That's that's the first, you know, yeah. That's Could the first you imagine person Conrad Thompson and Bobby Heenan? That's the that's the, the the depressing part of it. It's like yeah. it could have been magic, you know. The, the the guy who was known for the one thing, his gift of gab, and it was robbed of him, yeah. and then tragically taken away from us, Bobby Heenan. Would it would be an amazing? Well, you know, fuck. You know, there was a an imposter on Twitter, and uh, I fucking fell for it because just out of my own hopes of getting to hear, what what is Bobby thinking right now? You know, mm-hmm. you know, I, I would I would love to have heard, either hear him do a podcast or just be on social media. You know, just yeah. whatever. Whatever he says is gold. In some ways, I almost, I'm glad he wasn't on social media. Because oh my it, God, yeah, it, it keeps a... him in a time where he wasn't as uh, approachable in that regard, you know? And Yeah. But, uh, there, was a mis- m- there was a mystique. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, something that I think is missing from a lot of wrestlers today because of social media. It's like, I was having this conversation yesterday with somebody. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like. Yeah, social media is good, and it's good to let people in, but only let them in so far. Yep. Just because you got to keep a little mystery, you know. You don't want to kill the illusion. But I just think, I mean, I almost wonder a podcast of of Bobby Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon. Oh, my God. Just. Yeah. Just talking. But, but I mean, a Conrad Thompson, you know, who to me, Conrad is the ultimate podcast host. You know, I yeah. mean. But you look at like his show with Tony Schiavone, and the the way that that's gone of like watch alongs and the the humor around that episode. I just or around that show. I just think Conrad and Bobby the Brain Heenan would have been. Uh, I you could dream about that. Like, and I'm sure Conrad been, does. Just, you know, you just it would have it would have been three hours of Conrad laughing. Yes, Bobby's great. Yes. Yeah. Um. Uh, James Sorensen, can we get BWO skull caps? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I well, guess they're, 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 they're like the beanie caps. Yeah, something like. Yeah, I guess we'll figure yeah. out what, what do you mean by that. We'll figure that out because uh, I think yeah. I'm sure if you talk to they they do like short run print on demand type deals at Pro Wrestling Tees. Like I'm sure the Blue Meanie page could do something like that. You know. Yeah, which I'm doing right now with their their top. Rope Tuesday page to do. Can we the, talk uh, about that up. for a second? Yeah, yeah. I showed that to my kids. Now my son mm-hmm. is huge into Ghostbusters now. Yeah, and it blew his mind. That's that amazing. Um, it was uh, it, it that was really cool. That was a really yeah. cool design. Um, yeah, of course it's it's it, it's, no, it's no longer available. No longer available. Know, but the, if you if you didn't see it, man. Well, that was, that was yeah. a great one, though. Um, you're gonna have to bring that back when the movie comes out. Well, that's the thing about Top Rope Tuesday. Once it's done, it's done. So, uh, if, if you missed it, sorry. Uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. They, awesome. they approached me about it and said, "Hey, we got this idea." And I was like, "Absolutely!" So cool. Uh, I just said, I get notifications, and uh, one guy bought like six for six of them for himself. It's it, it's like astounding the amount of people who have bought this shirt. It's it's awesome. a, it's, it's so cool. Well, it's so cool. Very cool shirt. Um, James mm-hmm. asks uh, Josh, "What did you think of my tweet?" If it's the tweet where I think I know what you're talking about, so James kind of like shot on uh, uh, 
Meltzer, <laughs> which was great. Um, let me see if I can find it on here. Uh, it was it was the most. Uh, it, it it was it was really wonderful. Um, so yeah. Oh oh, Meltzer like tweeted out a day ago or so. Like uh, SmackDown appears to be up about three hundred thousand views with crowds. Raw will do a big number by today's standards. Um, it's always crap like that by today's standards. It's like shut the you know. Uh, yeah. Almost for sure Monday with crowds and lack of major sports competition. Sorensen <laughs> replies, "No one really cares about your opinion, dum dum." Just, oh my god! Which popped me so much. It was just because it was such a. There's something. Um, <laughs> there is something about just referring to someone as a dum dum. Where like you can't even get offended, right? But yeah. it was. I don't know. It, it made me. Uh, made that laugh. just and made is, my heart. Um. Yeah. Oh, and as far and then Sorensen also says Skullcap. He wants the ones like Hogan wore back in the NWO days. Oh, like a do rag, like a do rag type deal. Oh, I thought you were talking like a beanie cap. Yeah. Uh, we can figure something out. Yeah. Um, but yes, I loved your tweet, <laughs> Sorensen. It's fantastic. Um, That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody has their their things that they say to Meltzer, but nobody has the balls to call him a dum dum. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm I, actually, while well, I'm looking up on Twitter here, there's an ad for in theaters Friday. Uh, I think it's called old. Um, it's a, uh, uh, M night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. Have you seen previews for that? No. Nah. It looks pretty cool. It's like every hour or so. It's something like, or like every half hour on this beach, they age like a year. And it's like all like the the kids are like they come in as like little kids and then they're like instantly like like grown up. It's like really a weird thing, um, which I feel I like do the drug. I want to do the drugs M Night Shyamalan does. I know it's like so. I really want to see it, but I don't want to. It's like in theaters. I haven't been to a theater in a really long time. So yeah. Um, but uh. Yeah, Maybe it's uh, on HBO Max because every movie seems to go from the theater to that. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, all right, one, we got time for one more question here. Um, the old hashtag Ask Meanie. So, if you ever have a question, you don't have to wait until we post that. Just hashtag Ask Meanie and leave it here. Yeah. Um, all right, two more questions because Ringside Rant, RJ, our buddy there, says. Uh, can you see John Cena? And if so, how is he doing? <laughs> um, great. Uh, it's a great line. I, I read about it. I didn't actually see it, but apparently Michael Cole. I Actually, I did see. I didn't hear the line, but I did see Michael Cole going nuts for, oh, my God, John Cena's here. And uh, what's his name? Doing the commentary with Michael Cole. Um, Pat McAfee. Yes. Goes, great. Where? <laughs> yeah, it felt like such a Bobby Heenan line, yes, to me. Like I, I it, was, it was great. Um, all right, last question, which actually seems like uh, this is at Chris WD, two thousand nine. I think he asked this question already. We may have answered it. Uh, what is the one biggest criticism Josh and Meany have of AEW? I feel like we did answer that. Yeah, it's before. just um, yeah, and uh, I love AEW. I want AEW to be. Around forever, yep. you know, I really do. Uh, just um, like I said, they were they, they, we, they were presented as like they're going to be more sports oriented. Like I thought we were going to get American New Japan, and uh, it, it feels like it's been the opposite. And it's not bad, uh, but uh, yeah, just there's just certain things, you know. Um, yeah, I wish it would like you know the. Are, do they still do the win and loss records? I don't even know that anymore. Do they still yeah. do that? Yeah, they still do. They still have their rankings okay. and stuff. Yeah, so it, I don't want to be too overcritical, you know. Just I wish it was more like American New Japan, like uh, be different than WWE. Like I think they spend too much 
time on their they spend too much of their focus on knocking WWE instead of just being AEW. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like they'll do things that are just a blatant, like, uh, ha ha, WWE. Stop acknowledging WWE on your programming and just be the best AEW. That's all. Yep. Please. It, 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 it's, it's, you know, it, 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 it's good when, you know, you're doing your first show was a all in and you know, it, which is the precursor to AEW, right. but that, that really it was the uh, you know inspiration for AEW. And you're 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 an independent promoter. You know, before your AEW, you're three guys running the show, independently ran, financed, produced. Even though you know Ring of Honor helped with the production, but still you hired them to do it. Fine. When you're punching up. Yeah, it, it it was easy for ECW to do some of these things because they're punching up at the competition. To me, I think AEW is on level playing field now. Right, they're on national TV and all that stuff. TV time's valuable. Uh, you know, and spend that time that you're using acknowledging WWE and use it in, and invest it in your talent and give it a chance for somebody to shine. I will say, I just looked up on their website. Uh, all elite wrestling.com. Um, and they do have every week they put out their top five rankings uh, for right. it looks like men's rankings, women's rankings and uh, tag team rankings. And it is interesting if you look like, for instance, at the, the men's, you can see number one ranked uh, singles record is uh, Adam Page, 11 one for 2021. And then it also has his overall, which is 43 wins and 14 losses. Um, and it's cool because, you know, like Orange Cassidy is number two. And if you look at it, they are following. I mean, Adam Page is looking like he's, he's you know, going to go for the, the world title. Um, and he's the number one ranked. And uh, it looks like Jungle Boy has dropped down to number three. But he was number one ranked at one point And he got the title opportunity. So I think they're doing what they promised. However, I think to your point, they're not focused enough on it. The fact that I had to check their website to see, like, yeah. I I agree with you. I'd like that to be a portion of their show. Like, and I know it's on right. the lower thirds when they come to the ring. It, it does say it on there for a brief moment. But I would love to have, even if it's a Tony Schiavone there, where it's like, you know... This, this or Alex Marvez. Right. You know, it's like Alex this, Marvez this is a, uh, a records, or, you know, or rankings. Yeah, Alex Marvez is an NFL guy. What yep. person what more perfect person to give rankings and stuff like that than the guy who covers the NFL along with AEW. Yeah. I would love Mar- to see it be a segment of Dynamite. Like a, an event center, you mm-hmm. know? Have mm-hmm. a event center Alex Marvez this week in the rankings and this is where he was last week and blah 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 blah. blah. You know, uh, yeah. and uh, and uh, another tiny little thing, uh, Alistair Black, uh, Alistair Black debuted. Now they're calling him Malachi Black. Um, great debut, awesome, great great crowd reaction, but I think they robbed him of the opportunity of announcing his new character, which yes. is Malachi Black, for. For a guy who wasn't even supposed to be there, they turn the lights out. He comes back on. Oh, my God, here's a surprise. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, the announcer uh, just goes, oh, well, he, he is now Malachi Black. And I, I said on social media, why would a guy who's not even, you know, Excalibur said that. Yep. Why is a guy who's not supposed to be there, how are they, how do they suddenly know his new character? And then people are replying to me. Well, he released a video on his Instagram. I was like, wrestling fans watching a show live and in person shouldn't have to go and check somebody's Instagram page to know what's going on right now. Five five years down the line when they're playing the best of Malachi Black and they do that moment, nobody's going to be there to explain, well, earlier in that day on his Instagram page, they explained it. Look, I... Uh, nothing again, you know, it's awesome. He did an awesome video on Instagram mm-hmm. that maybe 122,000 people watched. 
Well, close to a million people were watching the TV show. So that's like 800,000 people who didn't see that Instagram post. If anything, let him do the segment, go to stun silence, go to, Hey, are we even allowed to have him on our team? You know, they ha- have that muffled conversation amongst the announcer. Hey, hey how, it's not that night. You know, Jr. could go, it hasn't been 90 days. How's he here? Oh, you know, uh, yep. Tony should go, can we legally show him? You know, and then, you know, go to a commercial the next week. Take that video he posted on Instagram and put it on your regular TV. Yeah. I agree with you. And that, yeah. I it's agree. Just, it's so, it's I, simple. I think, and that was my criticism, I think, that I mentioned last time. Um, and I think it goes exactly with what you're saying here is, I think AEW plays too much to the, the, the super fan of, of that right. genre. The right. New Japan, Bullet Club, you know, whatever like like that fan because those are the ones like maybe they're and this is generalizing but they're playing too much to the internet wrestling community you know uh because you just made a perfect point there that there's 800,000 people watching the show who are not a part of the internet wrestling community who didn't see that you know and people right. are not you know the internet wrestling community is a, a vocal minority. They really are. It doesn't feel like they are. It feels like they're everyone, but they're a vocal minority. And right. I feel like the fact that he's like, that's that, that the man in the ring is Tommy end, but that's not Tommy end. That's what I, and it's like, I don't want to know what I don't want to know Tommy end. I don't want to know that name. I don't care about that name because I want to know. I, just, I should never I don't know really... watching AEW that that name exists. I should right. know whatever brand, whatever character you're you're presenting to me. That's that's the name I should know. You just gave me a name to recognize him by, and then instantly told me, but that's not who it is. And I right. didn't know, and, you know. And Excalibur's like, you know, Tommy N. That's the guy that I spent all this time with. But it's like. Nobody cares. Nobody cares, Excalibur, <laughs> because here's the thing. Nobody know the majority of the people don't know you even wrestled. And I don't mean that in a negative way because, I mean, Excalibur, you know, I think does an amazing job. Awesome, dude. Yeah. I don't mean that in a negative way, but what I'm saying is, you know, when I grew up, I was much older by the time I realized Gorilla Monsoon was a wrestler. Yes. I grew up and and, and you know... Bobby Heenan to me, all I knew was occasionally he would wear the same thing as Andre the Giant and get beat up. You know, yeah. I didn't know Bobby Heenan had ever wrestled before. I didn't know that, yeah. like, you know, and, and so for me, but Gorilla Monsoon is the one that I, I always point to. Uh, Jesse Ventura was another one. When I was growing up and they were on commentary, they were commentators. I didn't know Jesse Ventura was a wrestler. I certainly didn't know Gorilla Monsoon was a wrestler. Couldn't even right. imagined him. This guy with these shaded glasses and the paisley, you know, a uh, uh, sport coat. I couldn't yeah. even imagine that that guy was a wrestler. And that's what I'm saying is like you've got fans watching. They don't know that Excalibur. Excalibur's never stepped into the ring in in AEW. They don't know that he was a wrestler. They don't care that he had a a history with Tommy End, who now is going by a different name. Let that be for the internet, the inside baseball internet fans who saw him change his name with his little promo. But instead, you can either refer to him as that name or go, I, or, you know, I think we, we know who this is. I can't even say this on air. This, you know, I'm, I don't think he's supposed to be here. This is not, you know, like. So, so, so somebody brought up a great point that Scott Hall never said his name when he showed up. Yeah. You know, you know no, who I am. You know who, who I am here. And- Right. Yep. And they they let that build, you know. And Larry and Zabisco didn't, say his name for what three. didn't Larry Zabisco go like you know get the camera off of him? You know we can't show yeah. him get the camera. Or maybe that wasn't Scott Hall. That may have been, or maybe it was Scott Hall. And I'm also thinking Lex Luger. Yeah. Lex Luger, I think it was Eric Bischoff on the first first Nitro. Was like get yeah. the he's he doesn't work here. Get that camera off of him. Like yeah, little things like that. That's a reality. Subtle details. Yep. And now with social media, they actually could have the lights come on. You see him for a split second, take the camera away from him, 
and then, you know, quote unquote, leak the footage of him that was taken at ringside by a quote unquote fan, which you didn't even need to leak it. Fans would have done it for you of him there. And then everybody's going like, he should not be here because they, and and then that's where, that's where kayfabe can be alive because you look at them. People are just like, Oh, he obviously works there and be like, well, no, he doesn't work there. Why the hell wouldn't they have shown him on camera? If he worked there, they clearly took him off. But if that was the case, I wouldn't have turned the lights off. I would have had him jump the guardrail. Right. That's and like that's a great point too. There's a yeah. lot of little things that I feel like sometimes get lost in it because I think they look and they go, Well, you know, everybody kind of knows it's a work, so let's just put on a show instead of let's try to be what, you know, what really makes it. He work. hops he, he hops the rail, have one of the QT Marshall students mm-hmm. dressed as a security guard take a kick at ringside. Yep. The other security guards go, fuck that shit. Yep. And he hops in the ring and then get the camera off him, you know? Yep. You know, like th- they do at a baseball game when somebody runs on the field, you know? Could have been. But the camera's on the announcers. Yep. Uh, we forgot we got something going on in the ring. I don't think we could show it. Yeah. I, I uh, Get people talking. Yeah. It was a missed opportunity. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Still going to be successful. Still going to be great. He's an incredible talent who I think is going to have Absolutely. a huge future there. Uh but I agree with everything that you had been tweeting out before about it and everything that you're saying. I, I think it was a missed yeah. opportunity. And, but that's easy for us to say. And this is the other thing. It's easy for us to say when you're in that bubble and they're coming up with what's a great way to introduce him. And, yeah. you know, it, it, look, it's, and that's why, you know, my other complaint about AEW is uh, no Blue Meanie. Where's Blue Meanie? <laughs> so that's my, that's my other big complaint. I, I I didn't see him backstage. I don't see him in front of the camera. Uh, I'm I'm just I'm searching for a blue meanie, and I'm not seeing him anywhere. And uh, yeah. that's it. So fix that problem. They'll be in Philly. <laughs> soon. Um, but uh, but yeah, but with that man, I think we we did a a solid hour and a half here, which is nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. and any any uh any final things you'd like to say to everybody before we wrap it up? Hey, man, thank you to everybody who supports us each and every week. Uh, our schedules are getting really crazy, uh, personally and professionally. So uh, thank you to all our Patreon folks who are who support us each and every week. Thank you. If you listen on Mondays, listen for free. Love you just as much. Uh, just please spread the word. Let everybody else know about us. Help us grow this brand. And... Um, Build our community of like-minded folks. Um, but, yeah, man, uh, just as much as, you know, it's cool to see fans back at wrestling shows. It's it's cool to see the fans who have been here with us throughout this whole thing. You know, starting the podcast, building the podcast. with literally no ability to leave our homes. You know, we it's kind of been like a, you know, DIY project where you know we've we've helped grow this thing so thank you to everybody it means a lot uh thank you for everybody who reaches out during the week on social media and supports us thank you for everybody who goes to you know prowrestlingtees.com slash blue meanie slash so says sure enough slow slash uh mind of the meanie you know and supports us you know in these tough times thank you and uh you know thank you to our patreon folks who support us on each every level Thank you. Uh, thank you for everybody who goes to cameo.com slash blue mini BWO and slash. So says sure enough and supports us that way. Thank you. Uh, Can you thank nobody? Cause I think that's the people going to my cameo. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, but seriously, thank you to everybody, man. It means a lot. Uh, you know, it's tw- 2021, I think. And uh, <laughs> the fact, the fact that we're doing something, like this and people still support it you know through the video games through our action figures which there's a handful left hop on those yeah go you to know. uh go to mind of the um it's an incredible thing we still have orders coming in um and uh and they're going they're going quickly so uh i think we have two signed ones left um and hopefully we'll, we'll get some more signed soon but we're uh yeah, man, these figures, when they're gone, they're gone. Uh, and um, 
you know, they're, they're collector's items. So for sure. And people are, I, I love seeing what people are posting on social media. If you did get them, you're listening. If you did uh, take a picture of them. Cause it's cool. Like I, I look at that. It blows my mind that, uh, you know, we did this fun little podcast and that people have our action figures on display in their home. Uh, it doesn't blow my mind that they have meanies, but it definitely blows my mind that they have mine. Um, and, uh, and I guess I apologize to all of you who just wanted to display meanies figure mint on card and you're stuck <laughs> with my face on your wall. But, uh, no, we really appreciate it. It means the world to us. Um, you know, uh, Manscaped isn't sponsoring this, this week. They'll be back next week, but, uh, I wanted to still, you know, meanie 20, go to manscaped.com. We appreciate everyone. Even if they're not sponsoring this week, you know, ugly drinks, they're great. Go check them out. You know, like. We appreciate all the support that we've gotten from so many, uh, so many people, be it sponsors, be it Patreon members. You know, we got our Sorensen level. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, we we appreciate all of you. Um, we really, really do, and we are we are busy. But it's it's nice that when we're making, um, it's nice that when we're making the time to to squeeze the podcast in, we're squeezing in something we love something we enjoy doing um and it's it's nice because it never feels like a, a, a i guess what i'm trying to say it never never feels like a, ugh, we gotta do the podcast oh we're so busy it feels like yeah. the okay good we get it we, good i'm glad we were able to figure out the time to do this to be able to hang with the pod squad and, and have some fun yeah. and uh we're very grateful to all of you so uh with that uh I guess uh, I guess that's it. What do we have here? Vanessa says, uh, "Thanks, guys. Wasn't expecting this on this morning, but it gave me an excuse to hide in the stock room and sort out the overstock furniture." Well, Vanessa, awesome. that was literally the goal this morning. We said, "When should we do it?" Nini so, goes, "Gosh, dang it!" Yeah, Nini's just like, "Well, I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping we can make somebody hide away and <laughs> listen to our show." Uh, no, we I know. I want to. We appreciate all of you so much. Um, and, uh, and we'll see you again next Monday and every Monday for another trip into the mind of the moon. Blue World Order. The world of MLW Radio never stops.